Hello, welcome to the Monday, September 18th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Las Vegas, Nevada. Checkpoint last week tried to make some waves by announcing a new vulnerability that Checkpoint called a Bashware. This vulnerability attempts to take advantage of the Windows subsystem for Linux or short WSL, which recently left the beta stage and should be included in the fall creator update for Windows 10. The basic issue that Checkpoint is pointing out here is that binaries running within this Linux subsystem aren't necessarily properly inspected by anti-malware. However, in order to actually execute these binaries, it does take a number of dependencies. The Windows subsystem for Linux is not enabled and installed by default, so an attacker would have to install it in older versions of Windows 10, or if it's already installed, the attacker would have to enable it, requiring the attacker to modify registry entries, which typically requires that the attacker already has administrative access to the system. So what this really comes down to is if an attacker is already an administrator on the system, then yes, they can bypass some security features, which at this point probably isn't really all that relevant anymore. Of course, still like any feature, if you don't need it, you may be better off disabling it in order to reduce the attack surface on your system. So if you don't need WSL, then just don't install it. And ESET is reporting that they found JavaScript cryptocurrency miners being distributed via malicious advertisements. JavaScript is of course able to use a number of different hashing and crypto functions. Recent versions of JavaScript even include specific APIs to do so. The advertisements that uh, ESET is pointing out here did not actually mine Bitcoin. Problem with Bitcoin is that it's not really all that efficient to mine with regular CPUs. Instead, they're actually focusing on other cryptocurrencies like Feathercoin, for example, which is much more efficient to mine with normal CPUs. And in this way, you do get some reasonable performance out of JavaScript. I vaguely remember seeing something like this before, but can't find it right now. This may very well as ESET claims to be the first instance of uh, cryptocurrencies being mined by malicious JavaScript that's being injected in the browser. Now, sticking with JavaScript here for a second, but uh, moving on to the server side with Node.js. Uh, Node.js recently patched an interesting hash table vulnerability. Hash tables are typically used to store data structures like strings efficiently. And in order to do so efficiently, we're trying to come up with a hash function that distributes uh, these strings evenly. Ideally, software would use cryptographic hash functions, but of course, they are not very fast. So as a compromise, what you often find is non-cryptographic hash functions that are using a secret key in order to make make the distribution at least non-predictable to an attacker. An attacker who knows the distribution of uh, these hash tables could insert specific strings in order to cause all of these strings being stored at the same index, which then makes the software really slow, leading to a denial of service attack. Problem with Node.js was that they used always the same secret key in order to create these hash tables. So the hash table was predictable and open to a denial of service attack if an attacker does send a particular set of strings to the application. Issues like this are not uncommon. I seem to remember a few years back where a similar problem was patched in PHP. Overall, it's not necessarily a simple problem to fix, but Node.js now fixed it by actually randomizing this key. 
HTTPS interception, of course, is another hot topic these days. And Cloudflare published an interesting blog with details about how much of the traffic that Cloudflare receives has been intercepted. Now, on the good side, a lot of the traffic has been intercepted by security software. We talked in the past about uh, local security software like antivirus scanners that will intercept traffic on the host itself. But of course, course, even that is not always done right and we had a good number of vulnerabilities with this in the past. But if you are concerned about HTTPS traffic being intercepted, uh, this article really gives a good overview of how commonly uh, this is happening and uh, also what some of the defensive techniques are that you may want to consider. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.